Hello friends, welcome back in Intellectube. This is the fourth video for the ISRO exam preparation. I have got a comment on my previous video for uploading lectures of Antenna. So I have made this video on Antenna basics. More videos on advanced topic will also be uploaded. So don't miss any video and subscribe to our channel. And if you like the video, then please tap the like button and keep commenting. So I can know which topic you want to be discussed. So without any further delay, let's get started. So we will start from the basic terms that is uh, isotropic antenna, radiation pattern, radiation power density, radiation power intensity, field regions and gain of antenna. So what is an isotropic antenna? If an antenna radiates electromagnetic waves in all direction uniformly and its field is independent of the values of theta and phi, then this is called an isotropic antenna. Now what is the radiation pattern? Radiation pattern defines the variation of the power radiated by an antenna as a function of distance away from the antenna. Here this is an example of donut shaped radiation pattern. In this case along the z-axis that is directly overhead the antenna there is a very little power transmitted but perpendicular to the z-axis the radiation is maximum. For different different antenna structure, a variety of radiation patterns can be observed. Now let's talk about field region. Field region is the space around any antenna. It has been divided in three categories. The reactive near field, the radiating near field and the far field. Let's we have an antenna with its maximum linear dimension as uh, D. Then the far field region is the space which satisfies the three conditions. That is first condition is uh, R must be greater than 2D square divided by lambda where lambda is the wavelength of transmitting or receiving wave and second condition is R must be much greater than the D. Here much much greater sign represents that the left hand side must be at least 10 times the value of in the right hand side and the last condition is R must be much much greater than the wavelength of the transmitting wave. This reason is also called Fraunhofer reason. Among the above three reasons, the far field reason is the most important reason since it determines the antenna's radiation pattern. In the immediate vicinity of antenna, we have reactive near field. In this reason, the fields are predominantly reactive that means the electric and magnetic fields are out of phase by 90 degree to each other. The boundary of reactive field is commonly given as R less than 0.62 under root d cube divided by lambda. And the region between the near field and far field is called radiating near field or Fresnel region. This region may or may not exist depending on the values of d and the lambda. Unlike the far field region here the shape of radiation pattern may vary appreciably with the distance. The next important term in antenna is radiation power intensity. Radiation power intensity is the strength of the radiated wave in any direction and is given by power per unit solid angle. Its value is defined for a given solid angle and its unit is watts per st radian. On the other hand, radiation power density is the strength of the radiated wave at a given distance and it is given by power per unit area. Its value decreases as the distance from antenna increases. Now the most important topic of antenna basics is gain of an antenna. Gain of an antenna is described by either directive gain or directivity. So let's see what is directive gain. Directive gain is the ratio of the radiation intensity of the given antenna and the radiation intensity of the isotropic antenna. Let's consider we have an antenna which radiates power of different different values in different directions. And if we calculate total power of the antenna then it is 48 watt. Now if an isotropic antenna radiates this much of power then it will distribute 8 watt of powers in all the 6 directions. So directive gain for the different different directions can easily be calculated by the EVA formula. Now the another quantity which describes gain is directivity. 
Directivity is nothing but the maximum value of directive gain. If we observe here, then we can see that the maximum directive gain is 1.875. So this is the directivity of the antenna. From here, we can easily deduce that the directivity is always greater than or equal to 1. For the isotropic antenna, directivity will be 1 and for any other antenna, its value will be larger than 1. So that's all for today. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. And if you want to make a video on another topic, then please comment below. And as always, thanks for watching.